As you guys know, I'm a big fan of investing in index funds and ETFs and holding them long term and ultimately building your wealth that way by just seeing a consistent return. And in no way do I feel like you really need to continuously research companies, read 10Ks and 10Qs, watch CNBC and Bloomberg constantly, even though I really don't think any of that's a bad idea because I feel like it's going to keep you more well-rounded, it'll give you a better diverse portfolio, and it might just help you out in the long run. But do I think it's possible? No, excuse me. Do I think you really need to do that? No. By educating yourself on the topic of investing, consistently investing in index funds and ETFs, you're going to put yourself in a position to see great returns and your wealth is going to continue to grow as long as you hold those funds for a long period of time, ideally over 30 plus years. But as you guys know, I also do have an individual stock portfolio and there's a lot more that goes into this than just the simplicity of buying and holding ETFs forever, a lot more. There's a lot that goes into when I buy an individual stock. I need to look at the balance sheet. I need to look at the business model. I need to see where the company is going. There's a lot that goes into it and it really doesn't take me a day. Sometimes it takes me a few days or even a few weeks, depending on my schedule, to officially buy into a company. Back in March, it was really easy to find these deals. You could literally put a dart in your hand, spin around three times and just throw it in any direction and it seems like you hit a bullseye. That's just how easy it was three, four, whatever month went, four months ago in March. Now that the markets are back near all time high, it's a lot harder to find these deals in individual stocks. It requires a lot more research, a lot more due diligence, and it just takes a lot longer to find. But last week I did buy a new stock, and this is actually more of a fund than a stock. But anyway, I did put some money into Berkshire Hathaway, and in this video, I wanna go over why I decided to buy Berkshire Hathaway. The first reason I bought Berkshire Hathaway is because of the company's that Berkshire Hathaway is made up of. Like I said, Berkshire Hathaway is more of a mutual fund. It's not like Apple, where you, if you buy Apple, you're only getting Apple. It's like the S&P, more like it, where if you buy the S&P, you're getting this stock and this stock and this stock and this stock, multiple stocks. And although these companies that Berkshire Hathaway is made up of might not be producing the most cash flow right now, in all reality, it is a very diverse group of investments that this portfolio is made up out of. It's not like I'm just buying into the tech industry. There's industries from the energy, the transports, the insurances, all types of industries. But on top of that, I already own some of the companies that Berkshire Hathaway is made up of, and I'm a big fan of them. And in addition to that, some of the companies that are in Berkshire Hathaway that I don't know, I'm a very big fan of as well. So it's kind of a win-win because I'm adding to my current positions and I'm getting new positions that I really like. The second reason is its track record. Now, when I buy an individual stock, I want two things to happen. One, I want to diversify my overall portfolio more. And two, I want to outperform the market. If these two things aren't happening, when I buy an individual stock, I just don't see the reason to buy it personally. On average, between 1965 and 2019, the S&P has averaged a 10% return. During that same time period, Berkshire Hathaway has averaged a 20% return. From a percentage standpoint, S&P has returned 19,800% since 1965. And you might be thinking, wow, almost 20,000%, that's awesome. But Berkshire Hathaway has returned over 2 million percent. Now, after talking about this, I feel like I should buy more shares of Berkshire Hathaway. But you get the point. These numbers speak for themselves. And I feel like since Berkshire Hathaway really isn't close to its all-time highs that it was at back in February, and it's still closer to its lows in March, I feel like you could even buy more here. Will I? I don't know. Maybe. But anyway, the bottom line is I feel like it's just a really good buy at this price point. Another reason I bought into this is simply because of Warren Buffett. And for a lot of people, that one reason might be enough, never mind the other reasons on this list. But obviously, if you know anything about Warren Buffett and you know his story, you know he's arguably the greatest investor of all time, how he built his wealth over time, how he bought his first stock at the age of 10 or something ridiculous like that. I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head. But imagine if I told you you could have the greatest investor of all time as your portfolio manager. Would you take it? I mean, what's better? What is better than having this man as your portfolio manager, I would like to hear one better scenario other than obviously doing it yourself. That's probably the best overall because you should create your investment portfolio based off your own decision. But if you're not doing it and you ha can have the greatest investor of all time, that's really not a bad substitute to be perfectly honest with you. But also keep in mind, Warren Buffett is going to leave this one day. He's 90 years old. Obviously, father time catches up with everyone eventually. And some people might think, well, he, once he steps down, maybe this goes in a different direction, maybe it doesn't work out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I actually don't see that happening because I feel like he's doing a great job in implementing the culture and I think that culture is gonna be around for a long period of time. And what I mean by implementing this culture is two things. 
buying for ideally forever, focusing on long-term investing, and buying great companies at great prices. And some people might say, well, like I just talked about, what if it doesn't stick? What if someone else comes in and changes everything? Well, we've seen this before. Steve Jobs, once he ultimately left the company and passed away, the culture's still there. Apple's still one of the most successful companies in the world. So it is very much possible for it to continue on. And I feel like with Warren Buffett, he's just gonna set up this for the future and he's gonna do a great job of doing it. And I just have a really, really good feeling about this. Now, the last reason we're gonna talk about on this list is the cash pile on the sideline. If you look back at the previous quarter, Buffett had $137 billion on the sideline. Now, keep in mind, March, Buffett didn't buy anything. Berkshire Hathaway did not spend a dime. They sold off some stuff. They sold off their airlines and other things, but he did not spend a dime. This could be for a number of different reasons. Maybe it's because he didn't know what the markets are gonna do. He didn't know how certain industries are gonna recover. There's a hundred reasons why Warren Buffett did not buy anything. But the bottom line is he still has all this cash on the sideline. So what does that mean? It means he has a ton of cash to unload whenever he sees an opportunity. If the market drops massively again like it did in March or a valuation starts to even out, Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway are in a great position to take advantage of that. Buffett's always said you don't need to be right every single time, you just need to be right once. And I think that's kind of the situation here. He's not buying all these stocks that other people are buying. He's just looking for, he's just waiting for his pitch. He's just waiting for that fast foot on the middle. And when he gets it, he's gonna smack it. Having all this cash on the sideline is basically like waiting for a fastball in the middle on a 3-0 pitch with the bases loaded. You know it's coming, you know he's gotta throw a strike, so you're just waiting for it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. This was my opinion on Berkshire Hathaway and why I decided to buy it and my consensus around it. Again, as always, I'm just a random person talking to a camera in my room, so make sure you do your own research and your own due diligence. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of Berkshire Hathaway in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.